Hi, my name is Asim Von Brayson, and today I'm going to talk about why what I'm holding right here is one of the best pieces of cookware you could ever purchase in your life, a cast iron pan. Now, I love to cook, you love to cook. If you don't love to cook, I'm not sure why you're watching this presentation, but you're here now, so hopefully I can probably inspire you to cook. Arguably, frying pans are one of the most important items in the kitchen, so naturally you're going to want to invest in a good frying pan. Now, if you're like millions of other people, you're going to want to default to buying a non-stick pan because you don't want to deal with a nasty crud after you're done cooking. You just want to be able to throw it in the dishwasher, get it over with. But as a person who has been cooking with cast iron my entire life, I can say that despite the supposed benefits that non-stick pans have, I would never switch over from cast iron. Today, I'm hopefully going to shatter the mindset you have of using non-stick pans so that hopefully you might invest in a cast iron pan. Now. Let's talk money. Nostic pans, if you want to get a good one, are going to knock you down $30, $50, maybe say even $100. So if you're like me, a broke college student who can't drop that kind of cash, you might be attracted to the $10 price tag that's associated with the cheapest cast iron pan, a $10 Lodge cast iron pan. What's more even on that, that cast iron pan, that $10 cast iron pan will last you a lifetime. Yep, that's right. Cast iron pans are virtually indestructible. Now. According to Linton Jobs from CookingPotsAndPans.com, non-stick pans last about three to five years before you actually need to throw them out because they become dangerous to use. Now, how non-stick pans work are they are covered in a thin lining of Teflon, and Teflon is what gives it that non-stick property, stops things from sticking to the pan. However, as you cook with non-stick pans, the Teflon starts to degrade, and once it reaches the point of no return, you're actually risking seeping that Teflon into your food, and then it makes it harmful to eat. What's worse is that in most cases, Teflon pans don't even last three to five years because once you scratch into the Teflon, you're actually creating an open seal in which everything can leak into the food and making the nonstick pan unsafe to use. Now, cast iron pans aren't covered in this Teflon, and while they don't have the fantastic nonstick properties that nonstick pans do have, you're not going to have to worry about having to throw them out after years. Cast iron pans can last for generations. There are actually stories of cast iron pans that auctions that have been around for around 200 years. And what's even great is if they get rusty or anything like that, it'll take you about an hour to take some steel wool, rub out any rust, and then put a nice little coating of vegetable oil on it, and then boom, it's refurbished, and you can use the cast iron pan again. There have been stories of cast iron, re cast iron restorations done many, many, many times. You know, many YouTube channels just fixing up cast iron pans just rusted to hell and it all works perfectly because cast iron pans are one of the most durable pieces of metal in the world. Now you might be saying, yeah, a cast iron pan is incredibly durable. What else is good about it? Well, for starters, cast iron is literally what its name is. It's iron. And because of that, it maintains heat incredibly well. Granted, unlike a Gnostic pan or any other pan of the type, it's going to take a while to heat up. A cast iron pan takes about five to eight minutes to heat up before you can actually use it. But what's also good about a cast iron pan is you don't need to flick water or anything to see if it's ready. If you just hover your hand over the iron, it just you can feel the heat emanating off of it. This also gives light to the fact that it maintains its heat incredibly well because it is iron. And on that note, you can actually deep fry in a cast iron pan because it maintains its heat so well. I've made fries, I've made tater tots, I've made fried chicken. I have made so much with deep frying in a cast iron pan just because it maintains its heat very well. So once you heat a pan up very high, you can put the pan on very low heat and then it's gonna maintain that very high heat that it had at that one point. Now, what else is good about a cast iron pan? It gives you that sear to die for. This is the bread and butter of cast iron pans. That's why so many chefs use cast iron pans because of the browning property of the cast iron pan. Now. What really makes a cast iron a cast iron pan is the seasoning on it. On it. The seasoning on it, it's a very light coat of oil that's very ingrained, actually chemically bonded to the outside of a cast iron pan. And every single time you cook on the cast iron pan, the flavors of whatever you're cooking become trapped in the pan, actually. And because of this, next time you cook, whatever you're cooking, whatever you cooked previously is going to seep into what you're cooking now. So say one day I'm making stir fry and then the next day I'm making a steak. Those flavors from the stir fry are actually going to be trapped in the pan. And when I cook the steak, they're going to seep into the steak, giving this, this nice cast iron aroma, get this nice flavor associated with the cast iron pan. Now, what more on that? 
the cast iron is incredibly versatile in that you can take it straight from the stove top and put it right into the oven. So you can stir fry some vegetables and once you're done with them, throw them in the oven to finish them off, bake them off. Or if you want to cook a steak, get that nice little sear on it thanks to the fantastic heat curing capacity and the flavors from all the rest of the meals you've been cooking thanks to the seasoning. You can sear the outside of the steak and if you want to finish cooking it off, throw it in the oven to keep the nice little sear on the outside and then finish it off in the inside and boom, you've got a perfect steak all thanks to the cast iron pan. And on that note, you can actually bake in a cast iron pan because it's literally iron. Iron is incredibly strong and it can maintain that. So I've heard stories of people cooking cornbread. I personally have cooked apple pie in a cast iron pan. It works fantastically for all of this. Now, as with any piece of cookware, cast iron pans do come with their downsides. Now, I don't have a kid, but personally owning a cast iron pan, it kind of feels like I have a kid because I really have to take care of it a lot. Now, for starters, never, ever, ever put cast iron through a dishwasher because if you put the cast iron through the dishwasher you're going to ruin, ruin the seasoning on the cast iron pan. The seasoning is the bread and butter of the pan once again and so you, the last thing you want to do is get rid of it. Now granted you could replace it but it's just a little bit of a hassle to have to replace it. It's nice to be able to go and cook thousands and thousands of times and every single time you cook that flavor gets sealed in. So the moment you throw that cast iron in the dishwasher every single item you cooked before you put that cast iron in the dishwasher will no longer be of importance because the seasoning is gone. The seasoning, again, is the bread and butter. Last thing you want to do is get rid of it. Next thing, don't use too much soap with a cast iron pan because the soap will actually risk cutting into the seasoning inside of the pan. Now, granted, you can use a little soap when you're cleaning the cast iron pan, but not too much once again. On top of that, cast iron is iron, so that means it's susceptible to rust. So last thing you want to do is let water sit in it. Now, you can let water sit in it for a little bit, but if you let it sit for upwards of 30 minutes, you're actually risking water seeping into the metal and then causing rust over time. And if a cast iron rusts on the inside of the pan, you're actually going to have to start from square one by steel wooling it and then re-seasoning the entire pan. Same deal with the dishwasher. Now, as for me, what I personally do, like when I cook eggs in the morning and I have my crud on the bottom of the pan, I take the pan, I leave it in the sink for about 10 minutes, you know, pour some water in it, so the water will sit in the pan and it will take all the, it will loosen up all the crud. So no longer than 10 minutes, because any longer than that, you're probably going to risk causing it to rust. You want to have the cast iron pan as dry as possible from all the water on it after you're done cleaning it. Now, once I'm done with that, I take the back side of a sponge and I scrape around all the crud on the bottom of the pan and then I pour it in the sink, pour it in the trash, etc. Then I wash off the pan, make sure there's no more crud on it, throw it on the stove and I boil off any of the remaining water in the pan. After that, turn off the stove, turn off the gas burner while the, uh, the pan is still hot because once again it's heat carrying capacity. I pour a light coat of vegetable oil on it and then I take a nice little paper towel and I just spread it around very evenly. This is going to allow you to maintain the coat incredibly well. Now, I hope today that I've been able to convince you that cast iron pans are perhaps one of the most versatile pieces of cookware in the kitchen. According to Gear, the YouTube channel Gear Channel, cast iron pans are the most versatile piece of cookware in the kitchen thanks to their incredible heat carrying capacity, their virtual indestructibility, the ability to take it straight from the stove top into the oven, and their incredibly cheap price just to start off with at a price tag of $10. Hopefully I was able to convince you to invest in a cast iron pan today, switch over from your nonstick pans, and if I wasn't, maybe one day you'll change your mind. Have a fantastic day.